What's the one piece of career advice you wish someone had given you when you were starting out? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I think my number one piece of advice is to pursue work that interests you. Um, I think I, probably a lot of the people say this, but I think it's absolutely crucial um, for me because what it means is the difference between going to work every day and often it doesn't feel like work. I'm, I'm pursuing I'm, I'm thinking about problems that are fundamentally interesting to me and might be thinking about them outside of work too. Um, and that, that to me is a real gift to be able to spend your days on problems that are fundamentally interesting to you. Um, yeah. there's a downside to that, I think, of course, which is sometimes, well, by definition, you take your work home with you, yeah. you, yeah. you might be sort of noodling on it over the weekend, but. That's all. I mean, you know, that's, yeah, I think there's a work-life balance thing you have to be aware of there. But I, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I think that's. I think it's a far superior deal than choosing a job that just pays really well and then be yeah. hate or something. That would be awful. I, I don't know how that would work for me. It wouldn't. I don't think. <laughs> Can you share a pivotal mm -hmm. moment in your career journey that made a significant impact? Yeah, I think. Probably the best one I have is mid mid to late twenties. Um, so I actually completed a PhD, and I was a, not sure what to do with that. <laughs> um, no regrets doing it, but I wasn't. It wasn't clear that I was on the right path, and I ended up having three jobs in an eighteen month period, um, and, and that involved two relocations. So I was in Kent, then I was in Cambridge, and then I moved to Oxford, and I every single decision was the right one um at the time and in hindsight that proved to be you know just the ab absolute right thing to do to sort of no this is not quite right recalibrate and, and move and, and you know people say think about how long you spend in the job and that's bad for your resume and sure i you can't do that for your whole career yeah but at that point in time a willingness to move to the next thing proved to be hugely advantageous and i, I would say actually i think this is like I, I, I give this out as advice to people and it doesn't fit everyone's life, but if you are willing to move for a job, I think that can be a huge professional advantage. Um, yeah. Less less true in a sort of remote first culture yeah. that many companies <laughs> have these days, but still, you know, I think, um, so we, I moved to the US, um, spent about 10 years out there, um, and, you know, that was, I, I think, a huge, a huge boost for my career, being willing yeah. to relocate. So that places stresses and strains on family and you have to have family that's able to move with you but but it can be an advantage to be to be able to relocate and, and be nimble in the job market yes brilliant yeah because it means you focus purely on the opportunity that you're pursuing rather than the logistic sure. element aren't you yeah definitely yeah, yeah absolutely yeah how do you approach challenges and setbacks in your professional life and what's your go-to strategy for overcoming them I think I've got two, so I'll share them both. Uh, one is uh, one is put the work down, go for a long walk, pref preferably in the hills, in the mountains. Yeah, ideally a windy day. It sort of blows blows all the bad thoughts out of your head. You know, really, <laughs> really, really sort of some sort of visceral nature experience. Sort of, you know, I don't know. I grew up near the mountains in North Wales. Yeah, so w walking sort of almost the solitude. And hard work of a good walk in the hills, I find incredibly healing um, and freshening. Um, if you don't have that available to you, um, you, or maybe just a walk in the park. But I think then, once you've had a bit of time to think, I, I often try and make sure I try and analyze the situation um, that whatever's happened, um, and really think about whether what what I could have done differently. Um, often you'll find that there might not have been anything you could do differently and, the, and it was just a bad situation um if you have peers at work that you trust um and that you can be a bit vulnerable with you know ask them you know what do you think i missed the missed the mark here do you think i did something 
poorly? Is there anything you would recommend I do differently next time? If you have those people around you, then seeking that feedback, I think, can be really enlightening. But sometimes you'll learn that actually it was a bad situation or the mistake was a year ago. You picked yeah. the wrong project to work on. And actually, what at that point, when you ended up at that moment that you think was a real setback well you hopefully you learned something and i think i think if you don't try and unpack it you might learn the wrong thing um yeah. and um and so i think that's that's probably the most important thing to do and that's sort of i think you know i i, I definitely start with my own behavior and my own decisions first but i've also learned over the years that you know in a big organization or but depending on the people around you, there, there really might not be anything you could do differently. And it was sort of yeah. almost inevitable, the situation you ended up in. But that's a learning experience too. So, yeah, I think that's my advice.